Hey guys, welcome back to a, another episode of Hair Tube for 2021. I'm here today with Ruby. Um, you wouldn't have met Ruby before, but I've known her a long time. She's done various things with me before, photo shoots, um, we've done live videos on Facebook and various things, and today I'm gonna shoot her for YouTube for you guys because um, we're actually gonna do a really cool cut and color. So let's have a chat about what we're gonna do. So Ruby has um, been sporting what is known in some fashion circles as like a short shag, some people call it a mullet. Um, I don't really call it anything, I just think it looks cool. So um, we're going to um, freshen it up today. So we've been doing on scalp colour. Um, we spoke about how we actually like the regrowth, um, but then if we don't colour her roots today or don't lighten her roots again, in six weeks time, it's gonna be down here and then it doesn't look like you've stretched a root like fashionable anymore. It starts to look like, man, you need to have your hair coloured. So we're actually going to lighten her roots out again, but we're gonna stretch it at the end. So she feels like she's still got that regrowth look, but we've lightened her roots so that we can then maintain this look for a lot longer without having to come in so regularly. Um, it's grown a lot since we did it. So what Ruby's asked is that I can keep the length in the back, but she doesn't want to tuck it behind her ear anymore. So we're gonna do it quite short in here, leave the length at the back, short on the top, and then we're gonna do something fun with the fringe. So I'm really excited about it. You wanna get started? Let's do it. Yeah, we won't waste no time. She's gotta to go to work soon, so we're gonna hurry. <laughs> We're going to lighten Ruby's roots. Um, light mask with bonder inside, 30 volt. Um, I'm going to do, um, probably notice and I might do a little zoom in when we get back, but she actually has where I stretched her root previously. So she's got artificial color and natural regrowth. So I'm going to need to apply it onto the um, colored hair first. And then um, once I've done that, I'm going to take it back onto the root. So I'm going to get this mixed up, get out there and I'll explain to you exactly what I'm going to do. Okay, so just have a look at Ruby's regrowth here. So you can see that Along here we've got um, artificial colour and then a natural root. So we're going to apply it here first and then once that's started to lighten, we're going to go back and put it on her natural regrowth. Got my light master with bonder inside and 30 volt. So something that um, varies from hairdresser to hairdresser is where they start. Some start in the front, some start in the back and I guess it doesn't really matter provided that, well, Actually, let me take that back. In some instances, it does matter. So if I'm doing foils, I'll always start in the back. So if I need to rinse them in the back first, I can. Um, when it comes to on scalp application, I always start in the front. Um, I think the front's where your client sees it first. So it's probably a good idea you get that right. Um, you can always um, refresh your application if you need to, if it's not lightning. Um, but I know some people they actually apply on scalp to the back. And that's so they can, again, like foils, they can rinse it if they need, but I've never really felt comfortable partially rinsing on scalp um, color. Like it's just, it's just a nightmare because how do, you, how do you control where you rinse it and where you don't? I've seen people do it, they do it very well, but I do it this way, so. Onto this band here first, and then we'll put it onto the roots once we've got it on that band. Okay, so I've applied to the band. So what you might have noticed is Originally when I started I wasn't going to use foils to separate it, but then I very quickly realised it was going to be more challenging than what I first thought. So I um, obviously using foils to keep it separate. You can see I've gone through there and just painted it on that band. Um, and like I said, it's just going to give us that little bit of a like budge just to pull that artificial colour out. Um, literally going to wait probably three to five minutes just so I can see, as I said, that budge and shift the colour. You can already see where I've started and started doing that. Once that's shifted, I'm literally going to pull all those foils out one by one. I'm going to apply it to the root, back onto the band again on the underside, and then uh, I'm going to process it all up and we'll be back. We're back, um, we've uh, applied the lightener. I'm satisfied with uh, how we've lined it. Um, all things considered, I think we like the band out pretty good. I'm going to dry it off and then I'm going to apply her um, tiny foot. Is 
mixed up, you've dried it off, you can see it's lined up really well. Um, I've chose to use a combination of um, natural tone, violet tone, and I've actually used some of the watercolour, so and it shows great, you know, um, watercolour in the colour scene. Imaginary rigor. So we're going to apply this to create a false rigor. And when I'm done, you'll see me back here. Okay, so we're on the um, root there. You can see that I've tried the best that I can to create balance in terms of the width on both sides um, and also keeping it off the ends. Um, that's pretty important to just um, milk this on the fringe so not all the way through but maybe just a little bit more than just on the root and that'll just give us something a little bit different on, on the forehead there and just see that slight little um, smoky violet coming through because we didn't pack it on and saturate it it's not going to be as deep as what it is in the root um, we're going to process now 20 minutes when that's done um, we'll see Ruby back for a haircut so silver is the best toning shampoo for blondes that I've ever used, hands down. Really? Yeah, it's phenomenal. Okay, we're back. Ruby is done. Oh, actually, you probably just heard me. We're talking about how we get Ruby's ends so wide. I actually don't tone them. I use um, So Silver by uh, In Total Results by Matrix. It is the best toning shampoo I've ever used. So um, now it's time to do a haircut. Um, I'm going to cut her hair wet, but I'm just going to take a little bit of the moisture out um, just because I don't like to work with the hair sopping wet so let's do that first time to cut Ruby's hair so today I'm using a uh, Edges Premium it's uh, EPH and I'm using an offset uh, handle you can see and I like to do that just because I think it's um, a little bit sort of on my wrist it's a bit better I don't have to sort of like bend my wrist like this Ruby asked for me to cut it away from my ear, so I'm going to show you how I do that. So I diagonal forward and I'm projecting the hair in the layering realm, so above 90 degrees, and pointing my fingers back to the middle, leaving it longer towards the front. It leaves the hair with um, softness through the ends. You can see that it's laid in the ends. So when I go and trim it around here, it doesn't just look like it's blunt and then I've got to texturize it because Ruby doesn't want hair on it ears. So um, you could just do this and then you go in texturizing. I prefer to use um, projection like this to determine how I want the hair to fall. So you can see me working from the outside in. See that I'm not combing that section down. I'm making sure I leave it there. Diagonal forward sections, and we keep doing this until we run out of hair. Yeah. Then this side for the other section there now this is the tricky one where we need to make sure we over direct so we're going to take our guideline from here remove move the ear out of the way and we literally need to swing this around all the way around so i'm literally going to cut a straight line back into ruby's towards ruby's ear next section again you can see i don't comb that down i literally just want to lift keep lifting that in I just find it easier to continue to find my guide when you don't comb it back down so swinging all the way around over directing you can see the guides there underneath 
and we're going to pick this hair up. Now this has to come up. This has to come up to here, not down there. You have to make sure that you lift this up. And we're going to run out of here very quickly here and you can see what's happening there. You can see that we're coming around here and around there. Now we just need to clean this out in here and here, but we're going to do that a little bit later on. First I'm going to do this same technique now on this side. Start in the back this time just for something different. Then I'll just have to do the front first. Just have to make sure you're creating that V and we're doing short to long. Picking that up and over directing. Okay, so we've done our horizontal graduation. Now we're going to go into our vertical graduation. And this is our stationary section for this side part of the haircut. Just below 90 degrees, so it is slightly graduated. And now we're going to bring the back forward to this section. comes back to this section beautiful now you can see we just have to take it around Ruby's ear and spin it this way but this is all about creating guidelines so we don't get lost in our shape which is what this is about. This way, Bill. Thank you. I'll bring the front to the back. And we bring the back to the front. See, that just allows us to create a much more balanced version of this haircut rather than it just being completely chopped off. Now we're going to move on to the top. We need to tie the top into the sides. And what I find is, is if we don't first get the, the length right on the sides, we cut the top. And then we find that the sides are too long or too short, or we've left the top too long or too short, and then you've got to go and do it all again. So it's better just to get the sides right, then you've got instantly a guide for the top. We want to go horizontal layering. Horizontal. up and again don't forget to over direct it this is over directed the back show you guys again from the side what we're doing horizontal and then here above the ear you can see we're over directing that retain all this length down here into the back very important and then 
we should find. But all we need to do is we just need to nick this off here and the sides are done. So now we know we can um, connect that to the top without having to go back and do it 10 times. This is also going to form the guideline for our fringe. Now I'm over directing into this part here too. Over directing, make sure you turn your body so you get out of the way. If you're doing this, you get in your own way. Sometimes you, you can't over direct it as well. Again, similarly to the other side, all you have to do is nick this off around here and we're good. Let's start this top. Now, I'm guessing the length that I'll need, and I'm bringing everything to that point until I run out of hair. And the reason why I'm doing this is because we want to not touch any of that length in the back. We want to keep it as long as we can. So this is horizontal increase layering, square layering. There's many different, uh, uh, I guess, terminology that you use to refer to this technique. For me, it's a horizontal line. Um, it's called square or box layering because you, essentially you've created a rectangular box that you're bringing all the hair up to. And then once we run out of hair, we are done there. And we just have to bring the top. You see that? Then we bring this down. You can see that it provides synergy in the back there. So it's not disconnected. And we haven't taken any of that length off down the bottom there. Yeah, I'll bring a ruby sideways so you can see what I'm doing here. Take these out. Now this is a mobile guideline. I feel like decide to over direct to be able to make sure that we um, retain enough length in the front. So taking that guideline from the back, we're working at 180 degrees. I'm not bringing this back, it's 180 degrees. section, next section, and so on until we get to the end. Okay, so you want to see this way. You can see this hair is falling out, we're not touching that. section. Now, as I'm getting towards the front, towards the uh, top of the temple there, I'm actually going to over direct. Because I'll leave the length in the front. And we'll cut those bangs last once the hair's dry because I want to make them really fun and choppy and funky. I know Ruby likes them quite short and out of her eyes. So. Okay, so we need some matrix smooth setter and um, we're going to blast it off. The rest of the haircut we do when it's dry, it's looking super cool. So we're going to texturize the hair, cut the fringe or the bangs and we're going to cut it off uh, the ears. Texturizing time. So we're going to use uh, the Excellent Edge Crocodile again. You want these? You can uh, to my website and grab some of those on my Instagram channel. Um, these are great uh, because what we want to do is we want to actually create texture without thinning the hair out. And I find that these scissors are, allow us to do that really, really well. If you haven't used a, a scissor like this with a design similar to this, or if you haven't used these at all, uh, I would suggest getting a mannequin head and practicing because they do remove a lot of hair. So you need to you need to be super careful. 
because we want these to look quite cool and textured and raw. We don't want it to be, I mean, we want it to be accurate, obviously, but we don't want it to be too perfect because I think um, it's sort of like um, that torn sort of element in haircuts like these are pretty cool. I'm just going to chip away this hair around the ears. Make sure you hold it, you don't want to cut it. Been there, done that. First time you do it, it scars you for the rest of your life. You never ever do it again. We want it off the ears, but we don't, didn't want it to be like banged up and really like, uh, how would you say it? Like, really, like a really strong cutting line. So, so I'm going to layer the sides and bring this up. Created some texture through these cutting lines that I created before because otherwise it will grow out too bulky. And you can see now that on the sides that I'm really good. Not bulky at all. Let's do the same on this side. really important that we don't cut across the hair, that you're literally just removing the weight out of there, you don't want to change the shape. And if you texturize across your cutting line and not inside of the cutting line, you actually, all the hard work you just did, you just go and bring the line down. So be careful not to do that. Cut the bangs and we're done. How are you feeling with the uh, bangs? You're going to go quite short. Short. How short? Pretty like, short. Yeah. Yes, I'm, I'm feeling that too. Yeah. I could, I could just see this sort of bringing it all tight. Yeah, in. kind of in one like, yeah. line. Yeah. More about it. Side first. And then we're going to do this side. So you can see that they'll actually, they'll take the hair right off. And then we're going to join into the middle. And then we're going to add texture. First, I'll give it a little blast to get that hair off the face. I texturize from this way. Sorry, I can't look at it. Looks ultra cool. You can see I'm just crisscrossing with my croc across those ends about an eighth of an inch in or a, you know, quarter of a centimetre in because we just want to break them up. We don't actually want to create huge amounts of separation in there because we want the 
to be quite sort of strong with the with the bang. But we want it sort of look like I've just ripped it, like with my hands, just ripped it across there like that. Close your eyes, darling. Just go through a little bit more weight out of this top area because it will get quite heavy very quick. And then I'm just going to check the back because I want to make sure that it doesn't also get too taily and too heavy in the back. see this texture starting to come in. I think that if we go and you know start to create separation in here you're gonna lose that strength from the cheekbone in the side. That's why we just did that crisscross technique through there. And now in the back again with my croc just through this side here behind the ear through the back quite um, pronounced but you don't want it to be and then chunky so just by lightening it underneath when we put product in it you're gonna see that we just get that nice separation through there Woo! <laughs> Rude B! Rock on! Let's spin you around, look at this look at this shape Incredible. and the other way, pirouette, pirouette, pirouette so you're going to style it today using Matrix Magnifier. So you got rings on, no good. So we're just going to put this much. Now what you want to do is palm to palm. Mm -hmm. and like moisturizer all over your hands, but if you go straight to your fingers, it gets stuck in between. Mm -hmm. And now you can style it. And I'm just going to watch. <laughs> go for it. You can't really stuff it up. You cannot stuff that up. So we didn't load it up too much with the product. Um, we spoke about making sure that we had good texture in there so that um, Ruby didn't need to rely on. So I can see you sub subconsciously went to tuck <laughs> just, it because you've been tucking it so yeah. long. One of the things Ruby said to me is, I don't want to tuck my hair no more. I'm done with tucking it. <laughs> I'm going to be doing this. So that's why I went and took it a little bit shorter again. Let me grab a mirror. It'll be good for the counting at home to be able to see it 360 degree. Do it as well. So you can see in there. Super cool. Here, you hold this. I'm going to spin so you can see. I'm going to spin around so everyone at home can see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Smooth setto. I'm just in my hands, I'm just tweaking the bangs to create that little bit of sort of cute separation. Sometimes I find we, we become too fastidious and then it looks overdone and it looks too contrived and too forced, but um, let me just push over there a bit. Loving it. Love it. Obsessed. Just a recap on what we did. Uh, you go back to the beginning of this video, we had um, probably about an uh, inch and a half of regrowth, about five centimeters, not quite, about four centimeters in, in our metric scale. Um, we had um, previously decided not to lighten uh, Ruby's root and I stretched it so we had a natural hair with artificial color on it um, So we had to lighten her regrowth with no color on it her regrowth with artificial color on it. So we did that it, um, Onto the band first back onto the natural hair second and then we lightened it all out took it to the basin Rinsed it off. We came back we did matrix uh, color sink uh, 8p 30 grams 5n 30 grams and 8 sorry 3vv 5 grams and it gives us that sort of mushroomy sort of base as we've got today, using so silver to clean those ends out. They're nice and bright, they look amazing, and um, what can I say? I mean, Ruby looks great. <laughs> yep. It's um, another great uh, head of hair for 2021, so thanks for coming and hanging out with me again. This is uh, obviously, as I said, um, Ruby has been on the channel before, but not on hair tube, so this is her first time on hair tube, so hopefully uh, you guys like what we did, and yeah, we can have it back again. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for coming in. So, um, <laughs> thanks for tuning in, guys. If um, you really liked what you saw, please make sure you bash on that like button. I've been told to tell you to hit that like button. 
And uh, if you uh, haven't already subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. Um, you can go and follow Ruby on Instagram. It's like underscore rhubarb. Um, is that it? Sort of, is that it? I underscore think so. rhubarb? I think so. I don't even know how I know that. Rhubarb? Yeah. I think there's another score in there somewhere. Yeah, I think it's at the beginning. Yeah. Um, go and follow her. She's always uh, doing some pretty crazy stuff out and about town. So, um, yeah, it's cool to follow her and keep up with what she's doing. Um, until next time, take care, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.